Hello all, thanks for tuning in to today's Bible reading. It's July the 28th today. Our readings will come from 2 Chronicles chapters 21, 22 and 23, Romans chapter 11 and we'll continue in Proverbs chapter 20. Although we've finished the book of Psalms in our daily Bible readings, today I encourage you to read Psalm chapter 22 verses 1 to 18. Psalm 22 verses 1 to 18. I'll be reading from the BSB, the Berean Standard Bible. But before we open our Bibles, let's ask God for his blessing. Lord God, please bless this reading of your word to me and to those who are following along, wherever they may be listening in from. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Before we go into the Old Testament, let's begin in the New Testament, reading Romans chapter 11 from verse 13. I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in the hope that I may provoke my own people to jealousy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the first part of the dough is holy, so is the whole batch. If the root is holy, so are the branches. Now if some branches have been broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others to share in the nourishment of the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, remember this, you do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say, then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. That is correct. They were broken off because of unbelief, but you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will certainly not spare you either. Take notice, therefore, of the kindness and severity of God. Severity to those who fell, but kindness to you, if you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if they do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from a wild olive tree and contrary to nature were grafted into one that is cultivated, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you will not be conceited. A hardening in part has come to Israel, until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion, he will remove godlessness from Jacob, and this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Regarding the gospel, they are enemies on your account, but regarding election, they are loved on account of the patriarchs, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Just as you who formerly disobeyed God have now received mercy through their disobedience, so they too have now disobeyed, in order that they too may now receive mercy through the mercy shown to you. For God has consigned everyone to disobedience so that, so that he may have mercy on everyone. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and untraceable his ways. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Who has first given to God that God should repay him? From him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Now let's go back into the Old Testament. We're going to start in 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David. And his son Jehoram reigned in his place. Jehoram's brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, were Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azariah, Michael, and Shephatiah. These were all sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father had given them many gifts of silver and gold and precious things, as well as the fortified cities in Judah, but he gave the kingdom to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. When Jehoram had established himself over his father's kingdom, he strengthened himself by putting to the sword all his brothers along with some of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. And Jehoram walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab and did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord was unwilling to destroy the house of David because of the covenant he made with David, and since he had promised to maintain a lamb for David and his descendants forever. In the days of Jehoram, Edom rebelled against the hand of Judah and appointed their own king. So Jehoram crossed into Edom with his officers and all his chariots, 
When the Adamites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, he rose up and attacked by night. So to this day, Edom has been in rebellion against the hand of Judah. Likewise, Libna rebelled against his rule at the same time because Jehoram had forsaken the Lord, the God of his fathers. Jehoram had also built high places on the hills of Judah. He had caused the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves and had led Judah astray. Then a letter came to Jehoram from Elijah the prophet which stated, This is what the Lord, the God of your fathers, David, says. You have not walked in the ways of your father Jehoshaphat or of Asa, king of Judah, but you have walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and have caused Judah and the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves just as the house of Ahab prostituted itself. You also have killed your brothers, your family, your father's family, who were better than you. So behold, the Lord is about to strike your people, your sons, your wives, and all your possession with a serious blow. And day after day you yourself will suffer from a severe illness, a disease of your bowels, until it causes your bowels to come out. Then the Lord stirred against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and Arabs who lived near the Cushites. So they went to war against Judah, invaded it, and carried off all the possessions found in the king's palace, along with his sons and wives. Not a son was left to him except Jehoahaz, his youngest. After all this, the Lord afflicted Jehoram with an incurable disease of the bowels. This continued day after day until two full years had passed. Finally, his intestines came out because of his disease, and he died in severe pain, and his people did not make a fire in his honor as they had done for his fathers. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. He died, to no one's regret, and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Chapter 20, actually, yep, chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 1. Then the people of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, the youngest son of Jehoram, king in his place, since the raiders who had come into the camp with the Arabs had killed all the other, all the other older sons. So Ahaziah's son of Jehoram, Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, became king of Judah. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Athaliah, the granddaughter of Omri. Ahaziah also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor in wickedness. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done, for to his destruction they were his counselors after the death of his father. Ahaziah also followed their counsel and went with Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, to fight against Hazael, king of Aram, at Ramoth Gilead. But the Arameans wounded Joram, so he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds they had inflicted on him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Aram. Then Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to visit Joram, son of Ahab, because Joram had been wounded. Ahaziah's downfall came from God when he went to visit Joram. When Ahaziah arrived, he went out with Joram to meet Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to destroy the house of Ahab. So, while Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, he found the rulers of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's brothers who were serving Ahaziah, and he killed them. Then Jehu looked for Ahaziah, and Jehu's soldiers, com soldiers captured him while he was hiding in Samaria. So Ahaziah was brought to Jehu and put to death. They buried him, for they said, he is the grandson of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So no one was left from the house of Ahaziah with the strength to rule the kingdom. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to annihilate all the royal heirs of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabith, daughter of King Jehoram, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the sons of the king who were being murdered. And she put him and his nurse in a bedroom. Because Jehoshabith, the daughter of King Jehoram and the wife of Jehoiada the priest, was Ahaziah's sister, she hid Joash from Athaliah so that she could not kill him. And Joash remained hidden with him in the house of God for six years while Athaliah ruled the land. And chapter 23. Then in the seventh year Jehoiada strengthened himself and made a covenant with the commanders of hundreds, with Azariah son of Jehoram, Ishmael son of Jehoahan, Azariah son of Obed, Maaseiah son of Adiah, and Elishaphat son of Zitri. So they went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites from all the cities of Judah and the heads of the families of Israel. And when they came to Jerusalem, the whole assembly made a covenant with the king in the house of God. Behold, the king's son said Jehoiada, He must reign just as the Lord promised concerning the descendants of David. This is what you are to do. 
A third of you priests and Levites who came on duty on the Sabbath shall keep watch at the doors. A third shall be at the royal palace and a third at the foundation gate, while all the others are in the courtyards of the house of the Lord. No one is to enter the house of the Lord except the priests and those Levites who serve. They may enter because they are consecrated, but all the people are to obey the requirement of the Lord. The Levites must surround the king with weapons in hand, and anyone who enters, enters the temple must be put to death. You must stay close to the king wherever he goes. So the Levites and all the Judah, and all Judah did everything that Jehoiada the priest had ordered. Each of them took his men, those coming on duty on the Sabbath, and those going off duty. For Jehoiada the priest had not released any of the divisions. Then Jehoiada the priest gave to the commanders of hundreds the spears and the large and small shields of King David that were in the house of God. He stationed all the troops with their hip weapons and hands, surrounding the king by the altar in the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Then Jehoiada and his sons brought out the king's son, put the crown on him, presented him with the testimony, and proclaimed him king. They anointed him and shouted, Long live the king! When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and cheering the king, she went out to them in the house of the Lord, and she looked out and saw the king standing by his pillar at the entrance. The officers and trumpeters were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, while the singers with musical instruments were leading the praises. Then Athaliah tore her clothes and screamed, Treason! Treason! And Jehoiada the priest sent out the commanders of hundreds in charge of the army, saying, Bring her out between the ranks, and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said she must not be put to death in the house of the Lord. So they seized Dathaliah as she reached the entrance of the horse gate to the palace grounds, and there they put her to death. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between himself and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. So all the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and the idols to pieces and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Moreover, Jehoiada put the oversight of the house of the Lord into the hands of the Levitical priests, whom David had appointed over the house of the Lord, to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, as is written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and song as ordained by David. He stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the house of the Lord, so that nothing unclean could enter for any reason. He also took with him the commanders of hundreds, the nobles, the rulers of the people, and all the people of the land, and they brought the king down from the house of the Lord, and entered the royal palace through the upper gate. They seated King Joash on the royal throne, and all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, because Athaliah had been put to the sword. Now, final reading is only one verse. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 7. One verse, but it's a wise saying, so listen carefully. The righteous man walks with integrity. Blessed are his children after him. The righteous man walks with integrity. Blessed are his children after him. And with that being read, we finished today's Bible reading. Tune in tomorrow, July the 29th, as we continue in the seventh month of our one-year Bible reading plan. Have a great day if you're listening to this in the morning, or a peaceful night's sleep if you're listening to this in the evening. Tune in tomorrow, and as we close, we pray. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Amen.